Hi, I'm Joe Illick, music director of Fort Worth Opera. We are going to be performing Thomas opera, Hamlet, in 2015. And I thought that many of you might want to hear a little bit about Hamlet the opera. You know about Hamlet the play, and in the 19th century, the French didn't really know about Hamlet the play. They had seen a version that had no ghosts, no grave diggers, no death at the end. In fact, it wasn't really Hamlet at all. And it was uh, Dumas, who had written The Three Musketeers, that decided the French public needed a translation of Hamlet. Even though there were a few small changes, Dumas' Hamlet took the whole society in Paris by storm. Everybody loved it. And pretty soon, Thomas decided that he needed to make an opera of Hamlet. Of course, it didn't hurt that his rival, Gounod, had just made an opera of Romeo and Juliet. And so a Shakespeare opera seemed like the important thing to do. Now, Hamlet, as a play, involves a very introverted prince who has a lot of existential questions and is always in crisis about what is the nature of death and are people ever really faithful. These subjects in and of themselves wouldn't make for an ideal opera. Opera tends to be about larger-than-life emotions. So when Thomas rewrote Hamlet as a grand opera, he took advantage of all of the question marks that Shakespeare leaves unanswered. So it's a fascinating opera because everywhere Shakespeare leaves us wondering what does this character really feel, Thomas, through the music, answers the question. Please understand that the French considered all the dead bodies left on stage at the end of a Shakespearean tragedy to be in very bad taste. And so knowing that in the original play, Hamlet, of course, also dies, they felt that this was unsuitable. So Thomas wrote an ending where Hamlet lives for the French audiences and a different ending for the British audiences, who of course knew Shakespeare, where Hamlet dies. Now, I won't tell you what we're going to do, but you will love the excitement that builds up when Hamlet is told not as a play, but as an opera. Any opera written in 1868, like Hamlet, is under the spell of Richard Wagner. Once Wagner introduced the idea that every character would have a theme associated with them, it changed opera forever. The overture of Hamlet is the theme of the ghost of Hamlet's father. present. In this way, this Wagnerian technique of associating themes with characters tells the audience something that they need to know or want to know. Of course, it tells us emotionally what is the content, what are the characters feeling, but it can also tell us other things. For example, Ophelia has a love song with Hamlet. music that Ophelia loves Hamlet deeply, and he returns her love. However, Hamlet is much more self-absorbed, while Ophelia thinks only about Hamlet. This comes across in the music that they sing. Now, Hamlet himself constantly observes. He is not a participant. He is a person who looks at situations and evaluates them. He thinks too much, in short. The moment when Hamlet seems to be the great extrovert is when he wants to pretend to everybody that's assembled that he's just a regular guy. So he sings a drinking song. And this drinking song is one of the most famous numbers from Hamlet, even though there is, of course, no drinking party in Shakespeare's play.
sings about how everybody in life carries a heavy chain of despair. This is his drinking song, right? It's not a normal drinking song. But even for Hamlet to sing a drinking song at all is something that makes everybody realize he's not in his normal frame of mind. And that's what Hamlet wants. He wants everybody to think that he's out of his mind. Now, Claudius is a very regal character. He is able to comport himself with great bearing even though he knows that he's murdered his brother. And the only time we see Claudius being honest is when he thinks he's completely alone and he's praying. Hamlet the Opera. We hope to see you at the 2015 Fort Worth Opera Festival, running from April 24th to May 10th. See you there. <laughs>